Hey everyone, it's Robin Riley for Del Bello's Designs. Welcome to my video tutorial of a quick Christmas card. Today I want to show you how to make this quick card, keeping in mind that you can use this layout, this design, for other things other than Christmas. This is a great one to fall back on when uh, Mr. Mojo has left the building and you can't think of a way to create a background. This is an easy one. As you can see, there's a little shimmer and shine on this card, so we will be doing a tad bit of embossing. Before we get started, though, let me invite you to our Facebook groups. We have the Del Bellos Design page, the Del Bellos Design Lounge page, and on that page, we showcase all of our Lavinia products. Then there's this other page called the Del Bellos Design a la carte, and on that page, we showcase all of those other products that Patty currently has in her store. The other social media platforms that we are part of, we are on Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. And all you have to do is search the hashtag Del Bellos Designs. Okay, let's get started on the supplies that I used here to create this card. I used a heavyweight card base that measures four and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches. I like to use anything that is 270 pounds GSM or higher. It just holds a lot of moisture. The stamps that we'll be using today, Lavinia's Red Pine Large, that's LAV591, Red Pine Small, LAV592, and the other one is from the Cardio Winter Wishes 3 set. A great have, a great set to have in your stash. And this one says, every time we love, every time we give, it's Christmas. The inks that I'm using today, this beautiful truffle color from Elements, also Versamark ink, and for those of you that are unaware, this is like a glue. It is a clear ink that you use for embossing, and the embossing that I'm using is from WOW. This is the Metallic Gold Rich Super Fine. Um, gold, fine gold, and when I will suggest when doing any sentiments that you always use a super fine or a fine embossing powder so that you get all the detail of each of those letters. I will also be using a blending brush and I will use this stencil called Laurel. Laurel is an older stencil from Lavinia, but it's a great one. Again, it just adds a beautiful background to your pieces. I am going to, to be using a grid sheet. And this sheet is from My Sweet Petunia. These are the, this is the company that makes the Misty stamping tool, which I will be using my Misty today. But this is a paper that typically you use to line the inside of your Misty so that you keep it clean. But today I'm going to be using it for the grid purposes. Now my glass mat that I work on has a grid. That would work perfectly fine also. But being that I can't use my glass mat because I get too much of a reflection when I am videotaping, I will use this. The other thing that is highly recommended, that I highly recommend, is Sweet Poppy Low Tack Tape. This is the best tape I have found. It doesn't rip your card. It works really well. It's extremely reliable. Super good to have in your stash. Since we'll be embossing, uh, you need some type of a heat tool. I am, if you can see, I'm not sure up close, I created a faux frame of gold around this card, and I did that by simply using a gold Sharpie. The card base that I'll be using today measures six by nine inches. It is scored at the four and a half inch mark, and the card will sit centered on the top I like to do that faux gold frame when I'm layering on top of a white card. See how it defines that area? Okay, uh, the other thing is the adhesive that I'll be using is the York Glitter Designers Dries Clear Adhesive, one of my favorite glues. 
and naturally you need something to clean off your stamps when you're done, so I just highly recommend using water and a microfiber cloth. Okay, let's get started on this card. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in this piece of grid paper. Any grid will do. And the purpose of this grid is to make sure that our lines we are going to be creating, let me show you again, we're going to be cre creating this section. So we want our lines to be nice and straight. So first I'm going to just line up my card onto this grid paper horizontally and vertically. That way I know it's in proper placement. I'm going to just adhere this card to the paper with a small piece of tape. There are other ways to, to adhere this, but for our purposes today, this is nice and quick. So I'm going to just hold one corner in place. I'm going to pull a piece of tape and I'm going to create the border on the left side of the card now. So coming in two squares on this grid, I'm going to align my tape with both lines. Make sure this is on straight. And then pressing firmly on the inside of that tape. You want that to be sealed nice and tight so that no ink can get underneath. And then I'm going to take one more piece and this will create that big brown, dark brown striped area. And I'm going to come in five squares, I think will be a nice amount. One, two, three, four, five squares. I'm going to align up that tape. There we go. Pressing that tape down firmly. Now keep in mind when you're doing this, I mean, you can make this as wide as you want. This is just what I'm suggesting. You need to take a peek at your uh, sentiment stamp to make sure you're going to have enough room on the side of that section to stamp. Okay, so just just one of those heads up, keep, keep that in mind. Okay, with that being in place, I'm going to bring in the Lavinia Truffle Elements ink and my blending brush. I'm going to just add a small amount of ink right now and tap off. You know what, let me clean off my fingers. I see fingerprints that are going to uh, appear magically if I don't get this cleaned off properly. All right, sorry about that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use a vertical movement and drag my brush down my page creating these vertical lines. Don't worry if it's a little bit blotchy because this is all going to blend in smoothly by the time we are finished. So hopefully you can see the vertical lines that it is creating. So I will just continue dragging my brush. Don't worry about that little bit that just happened because it will eventually get covered. All right, first coat. I'm going to repeat, tapping off most of that ink, dragging my brush the entire length of the card, giving it a nice base coat. Okay, I'm pleased with that so far. Now this time, I'm still tapping off my ink but I'm only going to drag my brush three quarters of the way down. I'm going to start to create the gradient look that I want to see appear. As you can see, a darker line is forming at the top and that's what I want. I wanna see that darker line. All right, so here I am, three quarters still, just three quarters of the way down, bringing that brush. Now I'm gonna go in, tap off even less ink, and this time I'm only going to drag my brush halfway down. So hopefully you can see the gradient appearing. 
another layer it just halfway down and this time more ink less tap off and I'm going to go just about a quarter of the way down my page So I have somewhat of a gradient begun, darker, lighter at the bottom. I'm going to go back and just repeat this entire process, dragging all the way to the bottom. This is not only going to add more color all over that area, but it's going to help smooth out some of those lines that could have been created by me working in those sections. All right, now three quarters of the way again. May I suggest you using a light hand throughout this entire process. It's always easier to add ink than it is to take it away. So always work with a light hand. Now, halfway down the page, Halfway still, I'm trying to build up that gradient. And then the top, a quarter of a way down, I want this area to be the darkest. Now here I am going to press just a little bit harder with my brush. I want that super dark truffle color at the top. Now, as you can see, it's not as smooth as I would like it to be. If you're okay with that, you can stop there. But I'm going to go back in just with a little bit of ink and I'm going to drag the entire length again, wanting to smooth out those sections that I created. Now, this is something that you can work on for hours. It depends on how picky you are with those areas. This is all up to your liking. I am going to add a little darker to the top just because I really like it to be super rich in color there at the top. And each time you add a layer, make sure you go the entire length again to smooth out those sections. Now this will continue to dry and to smooth out as time goes on. So I'll also keep that in mind. It will get smoother. Now I'm going to come in with that Laurel stencil and I am going to just stencil this dark brown area. So place that stencil as you would like. Find an area that you're comfortable with. Load up that blending brush and just come in and I'm heavily going over this stencil at this point because I want a crisp image. I can always take a peek by lifting up my stencil to see where I may need some more ink applied. And I'm happy with that. I hope you can see that image behind there. So stenciling with the same ink that you used as a base is just a nice technique to use. Now, I'm going to, again, clean off my fingers so that I don't add any more marks than I need to. Hang on a second here. Let me clean out my work area also. And I'm going to remove all of the tape. Now, here you will see this nice line that's been created by that Sweet Poppy tape. Beautiful, and it leaves no residue behind whatsoever. Whatsoever, It's perfectly smooth. I'm going to come back in with this frame, with this stencil. I want you to notice the frame on this stencil. Some stencils have frames, some don't. So you have to be aware of that so that when you place this on your card, you don't want to end up with a straight line appearing. You just want the image of the stencil itself. So for me, by placing it kind of cockeyed, I can come in without, without adding any more ink 
I'm going to use that same brush and I'm just going to apply a very light coat of ink over the stencil that is on the card. It's okay if the stencil slips a little bit because it's not that big of a deal. It's not so important that you're getting a perfect print. Okay, so there we go. Let me remove all of this so that you can see how this appears. Okay, now next we're going to do our stamping. So I need to bring in my Misty tool. Get my area a little bit cleaned up here, guys. Because if there's a way, there will be an accident. And I'm going to now place that piece of paper inside my Misty. This just keeps that black layer underneath clean. My Misty's old too. I mean, it's old. Okay. So I'm going to get this in the corner, hold it down with just a few of the magnets. I'm going to start with the largest of the red pines. I'm going to place it a little off center. And when I'm talking about center, I'm referring to the brown strip. I'm a little off center. All right, I think that's good. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to use the Versamark. Now this sink, like I said, is very, very sticky. Make sure you don't press hard into your stamp. One reason is it's hard to see this. Second reason is you don't want to get it on the edges of your stamp here because that's going to appear. So let's not do that. So just nice gentle taps of this sticky glue, Versamark ink, pressing down. Now when you pick it up, you can, if you look at the right light, see a shimmer of that glue. Okay, I'm just cleaning off my stamp quickly here. I'm going to bring in a piece of scrap paper and I am embossing each tree individually. So I will use the Versafine Fine Gold. I'm sorry, the Versafine, listen to me. The Wow Fine Gold. Tapping it off. Now, when I made my original card, I allowed my card to dry overnight. I don't know if you can see this, but there is some excess gold sticking to the wet ink. Now, if I would have been smart enough, I would have tried to dry it real quick before we got to this point. But if you do what I did, you can just simply take a brush and remove some of that excess gold in the areas that you don't want it to stick. Okay, so don't do as I do, right? Do as I say, not as I do. Is that how that goes? But this is good for you to see that, you know what, we all do things maybe a little bit differently. And really, when this is all said and done, it's not really going to be that noticeable. Okay. Now I'm going to immediately get that gold back in into its pot so I don't make a bigger mess. Now, like I said, you know what? Before you stamp in the verse mark, set this aside for a few hours to dry completely. Half hour is probably good enough. But for today's purposes, we're just going to go at it. So I'm going to bring in my heat tool. Apologize for the noise because I got to get it hot. And I like to heat from behind. So let me bring this in. I don't, hopefully you can watch this occur. You will see when the gold gets hot enough, it will begin to melt. There you go. And those little excess pieces of gold that are there, 
that's okay. Now, remember not to keep your heat tool too close to your card because it can burn your card. Ask me how I know. Okay, so let's just get this one done. And then once I have the entire thing melted, I go over it just a few seconds over the top. And the first tree is done. Now this time around, I'm going to get this back in and I'm going to use some powder from a anti-static bag for this tree. So I can show you the difference of what it's like when you do this correctly. All right, I'm going to line up the trunk of this tree along the edge of that inner line. Using the Versamark again, I will stamp this tree and we'll be able to make a comparison of how this embossing powder sticks where it's supposed to as compared to what I did the first time around. Okay, that should be enough. Let me move him, bring in my scrap paper again, and add the embossing powder. Now, since I used that, take a look. You can see that there is no excess gold around that tree. So, Doing it properly definitely makes a difference. But to be honest, I got, you know, I have to be honest. Whoever receives this card is probably not going to be that picky and say, look, she forgot. Okay, heating from behind one more time. Let's heat up this tree. Again, I like to work from behind so that I don't blow any of that powder off. I want it all to remain. And yes, I have to rotate the card so I don't burn my fingers. And then a quick once over on the top. A much cleaner embossed tree for sure by doing that way. So one more time. This time I'm going to move this in a little bit to give myself room to stamp the next image. I'm going to use my anti-static bag and I'm going to use that Versa mark one more time. I'm going to vary the height of this tree. I don't want it to be the exact same as, as the other small tree. Let me get this. And a little bit more Versa mark. get a quick cleanup of that stamp and scrap paper brought in embossing powder tap off the excess looks pretty clean and dump it in the pot get in the habit of doing that right away so that you don't have any accidents because this stuff goes everywhere when it goes okay last heating of the tree isn't that fun to watch so cool okay and the last stamping that we have to do is simply the sentiment so I am going to, just to be safe, I'm going to use the anti-static bag for this area, just to be safe. And I'm going to align my sentiment up as straight as possible. Now be careful when you're stamping sentiments always because you don't wanna press too hard and make the letters kind of get fat. Plus, we're working with Versamark here, so it's a little harder to see. 
I make sure I get a really good coat on that sentiment. Pressing firmly, but not too over the top here because I don't want to make those fat letters. I want these to come out looking pretty good. Okay, last embossing, so bear with me here. Let's see, make sure we get it all covered. Looks pretty good. Might be a little, oh, that was excess from before, that's okay. Let me get this cleared off. Okay, heat this one last time here with the heat tool, guys. Hang in here with me. There we go. Doesn't take but a couple seconds for that to get going. And there you go. The card is just about finished. The only thing I want to show you now is how to create that faux frame. So I'll be using a Sharpie gold metallic marker. I bring in, uh, I just use some scraps. You'll recognize these scraps when you see them. Old pieces of Lavinia backgrounds here from when you purchase the stamps. And what I'm going to do is just simply take this extra card, give myself about a sixteenth of an inch edge, to my actual card topper. Some people like to do this initially. That way if they screw it up, all they have screwed up is a piece of paper. But I feel confident, to be honest, doing it my direction and my way. I just really take my time. I give myself such a little area here to work and I make sure that I drag slowly and I watch myself as I'm doing this. Anytime I've ever had a pen slip, it's because I am not focused on the point of the pen. I just follow that all the way around. As you can see, I just give myself a sliver of area to work. And that is it. That creates the faux frame. The metallic markers are absolutely wonderful. I hope you can see that. You'll see it better when I put it on the card base. So the last thing, all you have to do is apply this to the card base. Let me bring in this wonderful glue of mine. Let me get that pin out. Okay. Always keep that pin inside your glue tip. And even at that, as you can see, sometimes it dries up in there. And all you have to do is take that pin, pounce it up and down a few times, and then the glue should start to flow easily. Now, this card is a little bit bumpy. It's raised in some areas because of the heat of me embossing. So I am going to suggest what you do is lay it under something heavy, prior to assembling it onto your card base. Get it as flat as possible. But doing it in this direction will also work. So what I'll do is I will, when I'm done here with this video and sharing with you, I will place something heavy on top of this just to make sure it stays nice and flat. So here we go, let's look at the original. As you can see, the original is much cleaner because I let this piece dry for several hours before I embossed. Here, you can see where some of that embossing hit the wet ink. But to be honest, it's really not that bad. It actually, to me, looks like a little bit of gold snow falling. So again, don't worry about it if you make mistakes like that. Most people will never even notice that. Okay, let me show you one more that I did. This one I did without embossing. Some people like to emboss, some people don't. And here I did basically the same layout. This sentiment, may the good time spent with loved ones become the treasured memories of tomorrow, also is part of that uh, set, the Winter Wishes 3 set from Sweet Poppy. I used just a different Lavinia 
uh, stencil here. I think, what is that one called? Ambiance. Okay, that was that. And the colors that I used here. I stamped in the Rainforest Versafine Claire. And the green strip here, I used Distressed Ink Forest Moss color to get that gradient. So, it, you know what? It all depends on what you're going for. But again, kind of a simple, easy card to do. Again, keeping in mind that it doesn't have to be just for Christmas. This is just a nice layout for any type of card that you would like to make. Okay, guys, I thank you so very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.